So you guys know that I'm a big fan of Android phones. I mean, heck, I've got three of them right here, but I'm really not a big fan of Google. And so that puts people like me in a bit of a predicament because I love Android. I love the fact that it is an open source operating system that I can use on my phone. Um, pretty much the best option, well, besides Pine phones, but the thing with Pine phones is they're not really ready for normal people to use them yet, at least in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Android, open source operating system. But one of the problems with it is that the decisions about what goes on with Android, what changes are going to be made to the vanilla operating system, and what direction it's going to be going in are largely made by Google, which means, surprise, surprise, it gets worse and worse over time. Sure, you do have the option to modify the source code of Android, and then you can go ahead and compile your own custom ROM, but have you ever actually tried to compile Android. I mean, really, it makes compiling all of your packages on Gentoo look like a walk in the park. Well, Google is making yet another horrible decision to our operating system that we love so much. They are going to be banning all of the call recording apps from the Play Store. Now, there was supposed to be a call recording API that was going to be built right into Android. I believe back in 2020 was the plan for that which would make a whole lot of sense since smartphones are, well, they're phones. That's something that you would think you would be able to do by default. Anything that has to do with calling on a phone, whether it's a smartphone or not, should be built in, right? Well, no. So in the past on Android, if you wanted to record your calls, there were a bunch of different apps that you could use. Um, you had to install an additional third-party app, which is kind of insane. Um, but pretty soon that's not even going to be an option, at least not from the Play Store. Uh, you can see that there's a whole bunch of these apps that you can still see here in the Play Store, although the functionality of many of them might not be that good. Uh, and some models of Android phones, they're not going to work with these apps at all. So here we can take a look at the developer program policy updates, uh, these policy changes that were recently announced, and you can see that they're all going to be going into effect on May 11th. And if we scroll down here to the accessibility API part, this is the part that is relevant to the call recording. Because this accessibility API, that was the mechanism that was being used before by all of these different apps that claim to do call recording. Um, and Google, they don't give us any real explanation as to why they are banning these apps uh, other than what they say right here, which is that the accessibility API is not designed and cannot be requested for remote call audio recording. So that seems to be their official reasoning, just because it's not designed to do the thing, but why should that matter? I mean, Android is the tinkerer's phone, right? This is the kind of phone where you would expect many users, the power users, to do things that are a little bit out of the ordinary on it. I mean, hell, you can install SSH clients, you can install terminals onto your phone. Not everybody just installs Facebook and Snapchat and Candy Crush onto their smartphones. If you wanted to have a lockdown bullshit device, you probably would have gone and bar bought an iPhone. And as far as how well this call recording functionality worked, well, again, like I said, there's many different apps that offered this functionality before. ArcPhone is probably one of the more popular ones that was doing it. And we can see here that it has a 4.3 rating in the App Store. So seems like it actually worked pretty good. In fact, this Arc phone has the same rating as Phone by Google. So this is the, well, obviously it's the official Google phone app, which comes installed by default on all of their Pixel phones. Same rating, 4.3 as the third party call recording app. Well, third party phone app, it does a whole lot more than call recording. So clearly using the API in ways that it was not meant to be used is not the real reason. I doubt that it's gonna be for any kind of legal reason since the legality of call recording is highly dependent on where you live. So there's not going to be some kind of one size fits all solution and it seems like a huge overreaction to just 
completely ban the app for that legal reason because so many different businesses record calls and it's not a problem. Generally, at least here in the United States, the legality of recording phone calls just boils down to whether it's a single party consent state or a dual party consent state, which basically means does one person, is one person allowed to record or does the other person who you're calling or who is calling you also have to consent to the recording? But generally, all you have to do to get around that is just say, hey, this call is being recorded, just like the businesses do. At least as far as I know, I am not a lawyer, so don't actually try to take legal advice about call recording from me. So clearly the legality, that's not going to be the reason for Google banning these apps either. I think the real reason that they wanna ban call recording is because Google wants to have a monopoly on call recording. So you remember that phone by Google app that I was telling you about earlier? Well, if we take a look at it here in the Play Store, we can see that one of the features it offers is the ability to record your call. And here on Google's website, we also have instructions, very detailed instructions for how to use this app to record your phone calls. So it's not like Google is really prejudiced against phone call recording for any legitimate reason. It's just that their app does it and they want you to use their proprietary app in order to do call recording. They're basically trying to take a page out of Apple's playbook. They're saying, hey, if you wanna do these different special things, then you have to use our apps. They're slowly locking down the Android operating system more and more. But luckily there is a way around this. Many Android phones, most notably the Google Pixel phones, they can have custom Android ROMs installed onto them. So remember when I was talking about how it is technically possible to make any changes you want to the Android operating system, and then you can go ahead and compile it yourself, but it's a massive pain in the ass to do and it takes a whole lot of time. Well, a bunch of other people have already taken up these endeavors and they have created their own custom ROMs like Calyx OS or Lineage OS, both of which have call recording built into their default call apps as far as I know. Now, if we actually start looking through the rest of the developer policy update, we can see that there's going to be some other changes to it that are probably going to end up removing a bunch of other apps. Um, so here we see some things about financial services. Uh, this is basically saying that they, any type of loan app, they have to display what the APR is in a way that's actually visible for people to see it. So this is something that I think most of us could agree is pretty good. Then we have the hate speech section. Oh boy. So. Any apps that are going to promote violence or incite hatred against individuals or groups based on this dozen or so different um, identity categorizations, then that app is going to be banned. So that seems like something that Google probably already enforces on the App Store. I mean, I know I certainly haven't seen any apps that I would consider to be racist or sexist or anything like that. Uh, but then again, my barometer for measuring these types of hatred, I guess, is broken because there's all sorts of things that I don't think are offensive, but people in current day seem to think they are. Let's just hope that Google is not too sensitive in how they classify apps as promoting hate speech. Because, um, for example, there's like a dozen or so different Indian browsers that I really hope are not going to get banned by this. I don't know if they would or not. I mean... They say that they're Indian browsers, so I don't know if maybe Google's gonna think that they're trying to be racist against Indians. Uh, I wanted to review a bunch of these to make a video, I guess kind of a joke video, because I don't know, it's hilarious that there's like over a dozen different browsers uh, that I guess are aimed for the people out of one country. Although, if I had to guess, I bet you almost all of these are just a reskin of Chrome. I mean, this one in particular, like it literally just looks like the really old school Google Chrome icon just with, I guess, Indian flag colors instead. Uh, so don't ban the Indian browsers, Google. They're not racist, I promise. Also, apps that make misleading claims are going to be banned as well. Uh, now, it seems like for the most part, what they're talking about are different kind of apps that, I guess, give medical advice. <laughs> like there's, I suppose this is a screenshot from an app that 
tells you that it's a cancer cure or something like that. And then we have this one over here, which is a breath analyzer to tell you whether you're drunk or not. Um, obviously, neither one of these apps are gonna work. In fact, I would say if you're looking up on the Google Play Store a breath analyzer to tell you whether or not you're drunk, the answer is yes, <laughs> you are very drunk. In fact, you were too drunk to drive probably two or three drinks ago. Seriously, kids, don't drink or drive. In fact, I think what would be pretty cool of Google to do instead of just banning apps like this is they should make it so that if you're trying to download a breathalyzer test from the Play Store, instead it just downloads the Uber app. Or if you already have it downloaded, it just opens up the Uber app and it's like, hey buddy, I think you should go ahead and order yourself a ride home. But you know, one of the other cool things about Android is that it supports side loading apps. So if an app that is actually useful gets caught up and this massive ban wave that's coming on May the 11th, then you can just, well, before then, you can ask the developer to put the APK on their own personal website somewhere for you to download, or maybe they put it behind a paywall if it was a paid app before, or they can just put the APK on F-Droid. Generally, it has to be open source to get listed there, though. Uh, or you could actually back up the APK yourself, and you can have your own little repository of it. That way, if you ever have to reset your phone or if you buy a new phone, you can just, boom, go ahead and load the APK onto there. And you might be thinking, oh, why on earth would you want to tell people to install a bunch of nonsense apps that promote hate speech or that give out fake medical advice? Because it's your phone. Your phone is your phone. My phone is my phone. All three of these phones are my phones. And if I want to install a racist breathalyzer app that also records my phone calls, then that's my business. I should be able to do with my phones whatever I want. So have fun using your phones freely and deciding for yourself what apps you want to use. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great rest of your day.